Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Steve here, and I am very concerned about the declining population of the Pacific Northwest tree octopus. And what I'm really hoping is that today you'll join me in efforts to save this wonderful creature from extinction. There we can see a, a wonderful picture of the Northwest Pacific tree octopus. You know, lives up in the northwestern corner of the country, Oregon, Washington State. I think there's even a few there in Idaho. There we can see um, also some of their favorite nesting grounds there in the, um, in the state of Oregon. But um, as many creatures are, their, the predation and the decrease in their habitat has really helped to lead to declining numbers. And certainly logging trees in the Pacific Northwest has hurt. Uh, back in the day, uh, the 1920s, there was a rage for these octopi hats, were just all the rage, you know. Remember the 20s with the flappers and crossword puzzles and the octopi hat was also quite a bit a part of that. And as usual, there was some fear. Um, this gentleman, Glenn Bones Hartz Hartzell, uh, made a living with uh, doing a tree octopus exhibit and calling it, you know, the devil of the trees, which helped to incite some panic against these poor, wonderful creatures. So you might say, Steve, I don't believe what you're telling me unless I see this on YouTube. So I'm going to show you this on YouTube. So this is some actual film footage of a tree octopus. Let's just take a, a brief blow that up a little bit so we can full screen it. There we go. That's a pretty good sized tree octopus there. Um, apparently quite a windy day when they were uh, filming this video, but there we can see that majestic creature there. Um, I believe that's a, um, a female, um, and I believe that also may be part of mating season and perhaps that she is trying to attract a mate, um, so it would seem. So um, there we can see the, uh, the tree octopus there. So I hope you'll join me in efforts to save the tree octopus because it is becoming rapidly endangered. And you know, while we're on the subject of, of other dangers, I, I do also hope you'll sign my petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide, which is quite a deadly substance. Uh, it's, it's really something that's around us all the time. It's colorless and an odorless chemical compound. Um, sometimes you may see it referred to as dihydrogen oxide or hydrogen hydroxide or hydronium hydroxide or simply hydric acid, but it's most commonly known as di dihydrogen monoxide. And it's certainly something that kills a number of people every year. And it can be lethal to humans in, in quantities as small as a thimbleful. So it's um, really something that we need to take very seriously. And really a lot of people, even though they know about it, aren't as concerned about it as they need to be. But um, you, we can see here some of the problems that cause death due to accidental inhalation of it. Prolonged exposure can cause severe tissue damage. I, I have actually experienced that myself. Um, excessive ingestion can be life-threatening. Thankfully, I haven't had that, but um, a gaseous versions of it can cause severe burns. It, it leads to soil erosion and in past situations has destroyed farming in various locations for short periods of time and even long periods of time. And so, um, oh gosh, I didn't know about that, that it was given to vicious dogs involved in recent deadly attacks. So, oh wow, and the thermal variations in DM DHMO are suspected a contributor to the El Nino weather effect. I did not know that, but it's used all over, we can see, but it's certainly a very, very, situ very, very difficult situation, very, very critical situation. So I hope I can count on you to help support this. Okay, you might think, Steve, you have lost your mind. This was supposed to be a video about integrating technology and helping students to meet WIOA requirements for uh, digital literacy. And I can tell you, we've done this. The tree octopus, and of course, the tree octopus is fake. There is no such thing as a tree octopus. We know that octopus only live in the ocean, or I should say octopi. So this is a bogus website. Dihydrogen monoxide, if you didn't catch it already, think about it. Dihydrogen, di means two. Two hydrogen, monoxide, one water, H2O. Dihydrogen monoxide is water. So yeah, those things talking about were true, but we don't want to ban dihydrogen monoxide because we would all die. So 
the interesting thing is, and I saw this on YouTube, and I wanted to read this to you because it proves the point of research that I had read about this. This person, Ellen Gray, says, I'm in the sixth grade, and today in class, my teacher told us we were going to fund a program to keep an animal from extinction. She told us that ours was the North Pacific tree octopus. We were all kind of skeptical until she showed us the website, the one we just saw, claiming the octopus to be a real endangered species that needed funds for a breeding sanctuary. Us being stupid kids, we believed them. And so we read the website, which was very convincing, and our teacher started a class discussion about it. She asked us a question about the problems for funding this, and the class gave straight answers. Then she said, well, yes, that would be a problem, but the main one is that the animal is not real. And, and this young person said, I swear the whole class was filled with a mix of anger and pure shock. It was hilarious. So. One of the big things that we owe is trying to do, or one of the things that we owe is trying to do is help us to make sure that we're integrating technology as we teach our students. And the we owe uses the definition of digital literacy from the Museum and Library Skill Services Act of 2010, which defines digital literacy as the skills associated with using technology to enable users to find, evaluate, organize, create, and communicate information. So certainly whatever we're teaching, whether it's social studies or whatever, we need to be thinking about that. What I've given you in as an activity is a digit, building digital literacy um, and studying the Mecklenburg Declaration. You may have noticed a couple dates on a North Carolina flag and license plate. And uh, one of those, May 20th, 1775, is the date that the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence was supposedly passed. Mecklenburg is that county um, that surrounds Charlotte. And so this gives you, gives you and gives students a couple of websites to check out and checking them out by using the CRAP test. And the CRAP test is something that um, digital literacy folks have developed and you know, the C stands for currency, R for relevance, A for authority, A for accuracy, and P for purpose. So this activity really helps students to see what is real and what isn't as you're going online because things online look real. You know, that tree octopus video we saw was very real. The website was, was well done, actually has some new things on it as well. Um, pictures and it looks fairly convincing. Um, so we always have to be on our guard about this. We, you know, we hear all the time about phishing scams and other things that we think are legitimate, but really are not. And these cost companies um, millions of dollars every year um, in data, data breaches happen. So, the, um, so use these things with your students. Um, I know in a lot of cases or in some cases we may not have the old computer lab like we used to have, or you may be teaching somewhere in the church basement. Um, but just remember, students bring in their own devices every day in, in the form of their cell phones. And it's something that we could use as long as there's a hotspot or some Wi-Fi access or folks turn on their data. You've got um, computers that folks are carrying into your classroom every day to help with the digital literacy skills. So very vital, very important. The economy has changed so much and is so technology focused that unless our students have these skills, it's going to be awfully difficult for them to be able to compete for jobs in our modern digital economy. So I um, hope that you'll find these useful and looking forward to seeing in the discussion board about ways in which you are um, improving your students' digital literacy skills through some of the activities and things that you might be doing. So looking forward to seeing your comments inside the discussion forum.